Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yonit Arthur. I'm an audiologist and strength coach and I specialize in vestibular disorders. Welcome to my channel, The Steady Coach. Today we're going to be talking about menstrual cycle and other hormonal changes and why these can lead to increases in your chronic dizziness symptoms. Then we'll talk about a different way of looking at these changes that can actually help you on your journey toward healing. To start off with, let's talk about when the greatest changes in your hormones occur. These times include the premenstrual time, so also known as that PMS time, about a week or so before your menstrual cycle begins or you get your period. It also includes pregnancy, but in particular postpartum time, so after you have the baby, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. And it also includes perimenopause and the transition into menopause, so those years leading up to when your hormones go through the menopause change. To understand this, let's do just a little crash course in what the main hormonal changes are. You can think of your menstrual cycle as being divided up into two halves. The first half is from the day you start your period until your body releases the egg, which is ovulation. And the second half is from ovulation until you get your next period. In this first half of your cycle, the hormone that dominates is estrogen. After ovulation, estrogen levels start to come down and progesterone takes over for the second half of the cycle. You get a little bit of a bump in estrogen in the second part of your cycle as well. But what's most important to know is that at the end of your cycle, right before you get your period, both hormones reach their lowest levels. This is a completely normal process, but these two hormones play a major role in regulating your body's stress response. So we've talked on my channel a whole lot about the sympathetic nervous system response to stress, but there are actually other systems that also respond to stress, and one of them is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis. The way it works is, if stress occurs, and it doesn't go away right away, the hypothalamus, which is a gland in your brain, gets activated. It activates the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland activates the adrenal glands, which are two glands that sit on your kidneys. You may be familiar with the adrenal glands because these are the glands that produce a hormone called cortisol. Now, cortisol has been kind of unfairly maligned as the stress chemical, and indeed, it does release in response to chronic or ongoing levels of stress, but that's not the only time it's released. Actually, there is a daily cycle of cortisol release that's really important to your energy levels. Cortisol quickly rises to its highest level about 30 or 40 minutes after you wake up, after which it declines. You get a little bit of a bump in the afternoon, and then it declines to its very lowest point somewhere in the middle of the night. This is important because this drop in cortisol is what allows the sleep hormones to rise and help you get a good night's sleep. So when the HPA axis is constantly being stimulated by stress, it interferes with this normal daily rhythm of cortisol. You've probably heard of the term elevated cortisol levels in response to stress, but cortisol doesn't just peak and stay up. What can actually happen is cortisol actually has less of a peak in the morning than it should. It stays at this elevated plateau level throughout the day and may not drop enough to allow your sleep hormones to kick in. When this happens, there can be all sorts of disruptions in your energy levels. You can feel very fatigued because you're not getting that bump of cortisol in the morning. And you can also have insomnia, brain fog, and other symptoms. These are fairly well-known symptoms of chronic stress. And they're also fairly well-known symptoms of hormonal fluctuations or changes. So as you can see, our HPA axis plays an important role in some of the symptoms that may be accompanying your chronic dizziness, and it may also have a direct role in activating your chronic dizziness through the stress response. Those two hormones that we talked about earlier, estrogen and progesterone, help stabilize and regulate this HPA axis. So, at times of your cycle or at times of your life, when your hormones are at particularly low levels 
or they're changing rapidly, those hormones will not be able to regulate the HPA axis as well, and you are at higher risk for HPA axis dysregulation, which can lead to, again, dysregulation or abnormal levels in your cortisol. But stress also plays another role. If you're under stress, your body also doesn't do a great job of balancing these two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. First, when you're chronically stressed out, you may not be ovulating at all. That's because the hypothalamus is smart, and if it detects a stressful environment, it doesn't want you to get pregnant. So if ovulation doesn't occur, you don't get progesterone at all, which can of course mean that your HPA axis is less stable. If you don't ovulate, your body doesn't make progesterone, taking away one of the hormones that helps regulate that HPA axis and stress response. The other way that stress can affect you is it can prevent your body from properly clearing excess estrogen in your body. Normally, the other organs in your body, particularly your gut, helps break apart and disassemble excess estrogen. When those other body parts are compromised by stress, estrogen levels can build up in your body. So in either case, either a lack of ovulation or lack of clearance of estrogen, you can end up with something called estrogen dominance meaning you have a lot of estrogen relative to your progesterone levels. When that happens, the HPA axis is not being as well stabilized as it normally is, so you are more vulnerable physically to stress. You can see how this can become a vicious cycle. The more stressed you are, the more the HPA axis can become dysregulated, the more stress you feel, the more your hormones can be dysregulated, and these things keep feeding each other. So it makes perfect sense that at times of hormonal fluctuations, which again occur mainly in that premenstrual period, in the postpartum period, and in perimenopause slash transition to menopause, that you would have more symptoms of your chronic dizziness. And indeed, this is the case. This is actually a question I'm asked a whole lot here on this channel. So yes, you're not just imagining it, your chronic dizziness symptoms are going to be more likely to be triggered during these times. So now I wanna share my perspective on how to approach these changes in a forward thinking way. I don't know about you, but when I go through some of these hormonal changes, it kind of brings to the surface a whole bunch of emotions. I might cry during a sad commercial, I might get angry over an untied shoelace, and I used to think of these more extreme emotional reactions to things as a really negative thing. And then I'd beat myself up for it. But one of the things that I've talked about in my previous videos that's really important to know about healing from chronic dizziness is that chronic dizziness is a stress illness. And I've talked about stress a lot. I don't just mean the normal everyday stresses of life. I also mean emotions that we don't normally allow ourselves to feel, emotions that we normally push down, either because they don't quite align with our self image I don't like thinking of myself as a sensitive person who cries during commercials, or maybe because we think that the emotions are just not acceptable. I don't always like getting angry at my kids, especially not over shoelaces, but emotions are just emotions. We don't have to choose to act out on our emotions, but we don't get a choice about whether they're there or not. And when we're constantly pushing them down, that is a source of stress in our bodies. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't engage in your normal stress reduction routine, a little bit of extra kindness to yourself, a little bit of extra meditation, a little bit of extra exercise and sunshine will go a long way in helping you through these transitional times with your hormones. But I want you to change your mindset a little bit and think of this as an opportunity. When we are more vulnerable to our emotions, what that means is that emotions that were already there inside are closer to the surface. It is a perfect opportunity for you to let out some of those emotions that we tend to repress when we're feeling better. This is an excellent time for journaling, for talking to a friend, or perhaps even a therapist about some of the emotions that you normally keep inside. Again, these hormonal fluctuations are an opportunity for getting out some of those emotional sources of stress. If you're willing to try this, you'll be amazed at how much better you feel in the long run. But from my own personal experience, I even feel better in the short run. Many of the symptoms that I experience around my cycle tend to dissipate or get a whole lot better 
when I'm honest about my feelings, I journal them and I let them out. I hope that was a helpful perspective for you guys. And I wanna reassure you that again, if you are experiencing these changes, you are right there with many others. This is a very common issue. But again, it's an opportunity for you to address some of those deep-seated sources of stress that are driving your neural circuit dizziness in the first place. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. I look forward to hearing your comments and questions, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.